from 2021 to 2022. This is the highest number on record since ADL began tracking those incidents back in 1979. What was your reaction to seeing this report? Sadly, I wasn't surprised. Obviously, I'm disappointed that anti-Semitism is on the rise, but it's something that many of us in the Jewish community have known for several years. Our campaign is really focused on raising awareness about the rise in anti-Semitism anti for people outside the Jewish community. Our research shows that more than half of Americans don't know that anti-Semitism is on the rise. So we're focused on raising that awareness specifically with people outside the Jewish community so that they can join us in the fight to make sure that hate against Jewish people uh, is ended in this country. Why do you think it's so important for those outside the Jewish community, people who aren't Jewish, to be a part of this? Well, the Jewish community is only 2.4 percent of the U.S. population, yet we're the victims of 55 percent of religious-based hate crimes. That disparity is really shocking to a lot of people. And so when we tell people that the Jewish community is so small and that yet the, the hate crime rate is so high, we that's why we need p uh, support from other people outside the community. We need people, all Americans really, to be part of the coalition to address anti-Semitism. We believe that the same values that prompt people to fight racism, to fight gender inequality, hate against LGBTQ people, Asian people, the Hispanic community, all of that, the same values are part of the fight for fighting anti-Semitism. And so we're looking to raise awareness about anti-Semitism, teach people what it looks like in 2023, and how they can be part of the fight against Jewish hate. You brought up that ratio that I was actually going to talk about as well, that statistic, the 2.4 percent of the U.S. population, but victims of 55 percent of religious hate crimes in the country. Why do you think that is? And, and what has your foundation heard incident-wise recently? Well, unfortunately, anti-Semitism is something that's been going on for centuries. Whenever there is a societal ill or upheaval, there has always been the scapegoating of the Jewish community as responsible for it. So when you look at the, uh, the current political unrest, when you think about COVID, economic issues, and other things that make people looking for a scapegoat or looking for someone to blame, unfortunately, the Jewish community and Jews are the boogeyman and the people that some turn to as being responsible for societal ills. When you layer on top of that social media, which allows people to say and do things with anonymity that they would never do or say in person, and that they're able to find like-minded people and reaffirm one another, that creates a perfect storm. People are saying things that they would never say in person. They're getting affirmation and support from people who have similar views. And that leads them to be emboldened and leads them to be more likely to commit actual anti-Semitism in person, such as harassment of Jews or actual violence. You brought up a lot of those big cultural and social and world events that we've been seeing. You say that plays into it and does it mean anything nowadays with this technology like social media to see any of these incidents and this hate coming from large you know national if not world figures or celebrities even Absolutely. Anytime somebody with a large following, somebody who is admired by people, when they say things that are anti-Semitic or they question whether the Holocaust exists, people listen to that. That reverberates. And while obviously some people shut that down and some people will question uh, their motives or question the facts that they're stating, other people take it as gospel. And again, when you create these situations in which people are questioning the legitimacy of the Holocaust or questioning whether Jews are responsible for, for societal ill some people take that and then they turn it into violence, they turn it into harassment, they use it as a way to make themselves feel bigger by finding someone else to target. And if someone sees or hears anti-Semitism or hate, what should they do? We're asking people to use the same values that they use when they, they when they see racism, when they see gender inequality, hate against other groups. We want people to speak up and take a stand. The we're asking people to post and share this blue square. The uh, this is the, an emoji that already exists on people's phones, and we want people to use that and post it and share it and show that they care about anti-Semitism and that they're working with us in the fight against Jewish hate. And how do you think people can learn more? You mentioned when we started talking uh, that studies have shown a lot of people don't even recognize that anti-Semitism rates are so high. What ways can people learn more if they themselves aren't a part of the Jewish community? 
Well, that's what our campaign is for. Our goal with this campaign is to re really raise awareness of the disparity between the size of the Jewish community and the percentage of hate crimes that, Jewish community, that the Jewish community faces. And so all of our campaign ads are focused on raising awareness about those statistics, depicting what anti-Semitism looks like in 2023, but most importantly, showing the role that a non-Jewish person can play in fighting anti-Semitism. Each of our ads features somebody outside the Jewish community who sees anti-Semitism and takes action. That can be um, speaking out, that can be responding to hateful comments on social media, that can be taking action to show support for someone who's being targeted. We believe that there are simple actions that people can take to stand up and speak out when they see anti-Semitism or hate against Jewish people. So we've been talking about this new national campaign. Tell me a little bit more about it. $25 million. It just launched. There's going to be all these ads across social media making all these points. What was the work and planning that went into this? There was a lot. We actually worked with a wide range of advertising firms to find a concept that we felt was going to be easy to understand, easy to replicate, and really draw attention to the disparity between the, the percentage of the Jewish community and the type of hate that the Jewish community <clears throat> faces. And that's where this blue square comes from. This blue square will show up on TV screens, it'll show up on social media feeds, on billboards, and every time you see it, it will take up 2.4% of the screen. And that represents the 2.4% percent of the American Jewish population. And so we're trying to show the size of the Jewish population, how small it is compared to the U.S. more broadly, and yet the, the disparity with the percentage of, of uh, anti-Semitic uh, hate crimes that the Jewish community faces. We want people to understand that because the Jewish community is only 2.4% of the U.S. population, we can't fight anti-Semitism alone. We need the support of all Americans. We need people outside the Jewish community to recognize that this is an issue and join us in this fight. And we've been really pleased to see so many organizations coming and working with us, wide range of groups representing Black Americans, Hispanic Americans, the LGBTQ community, and uh, a wide range of interest groups like the Parent Teachers Association, uh, the Boys and Girls Clubs of America, and, and a lot of different corporate uh, organizations and sports leagues all coming together because there's a growing realization that anti-Semitism is a problem in this country, and there's a role for everyone to play in addressing it. A really strong and, and powerful and visual message there. What have you heard so far? This just recently launched, but have you already been getting some feedback? I know you mentioned other marginalized groups showing their support for this, but, but what have you heard? We're hearing an incredible response. We hear uh, great support from a wide range of groups and, and organizations and social media influencers because there's a growing rec recognition that where anti-Semitism starts, other hatred continues. And so the people who are um, you know, on social media making comments against Jewish people, they're the same people who are being racist, who are being misogynistic and other making other uh, comments against other, against other communities. And so we really want to make clear to people People, that those that are fighting anti-Semitism need to stand up because if they don't uh, support the Jewish community right now, there's a real potential that other communities are going to be targeted as well. And the head of this foundation, Patriots owner Robert Kraft, have you, you know, what should people know if they're saying, oh, I didn't know this was something he had, this was something he did. We're not in football season right now, but I'm sure people, especially here, are always thinking about the Patriots. So what really is the message of this foundation and, and what do you encourage people to look into or do if this is the first time they're hearing about it? Well, I think a lot of people would be surprised to know I'm actually coming to you from Gillette Stadium, that our foundation is based inside Gillette Stadium, because this is a real passion project for Robert and the Kraft family. They established this foundation inside Gillette Stadium because this is something that they feel really passionate about. The, the Kraft family have been philanthropic in this community for a very long time, and they've been focused on raising awareness about disparities for other communities. Uh, they've been tackling uh, prison reform disparity. They've been tackling uh, racial disparity in healthcare, uh, advocating for the LGBTQ community. But Robert and the family have uh, recognized now that there's a growing problem for the, the Jewish community and a growing problem within their own community. And so they've turned their attention inward, and now they're speaking out and raising awareness about anti-Semitism. And if people want to participate or learn more about this campaign, where should they go? What, they sh what should they know? 
They should go to StandUpToJewishHate.org. There's a lot of information there about what anti-Semitism is and the ways that they can speak out against anti-Semitism in their community. And what we really want everyone to do is to post and share the blue square emoji that's already on their phone and take a stand against anti-Semitism. And last thing here, is there anything you'd encourage people or any tips you could give if they're trying to start these conversations, whether it be in their families, in their friend groups, or in their communities? We think a lot of people are want to do the right thing, and they want to say the right thing, yet they don't recognize that the things that they do and say could be perceived as anti-Semitic. It's important to have these conversations with friends and loved ones. We've seen language change. We've seen how we talk about the LGBTQ community, about the black community, other minority groups. Language has changed over time. Once people have spoken out and said, the words that you're using, the things that you're saying, the stereotypes that you are fostering, um, while it may seem innocuous to you, it actually hurts real people. And we believe if these conversations happen, if people speak up about the anti-Semitism that they're hearing in their own network and in their own communities, we can enact real change. Well, thank you so much again for being with us here today, Matthew. We really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. And that'll do it for us on The Real Story. If you want to watch these segments again, you can head to fox61.com or download the Fox 61 News app and watch The Real Story every Sunday at 10 a.m. right here on Fox 61 or streaming on Fox 61+. Plus. Have a great rest of your morning.